Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode one of the Grinders Cookbook. This is your channel for all things poker and cooking related. So that you guys know exactly what the format is going to be on this channel, we're gonna be making a recipe every week that is, we're gonna to try to tailor to the healthier side, but we're also gonna be mixing in some No Limit Texas Hold'em hand analysis as well. If there's any hands that you guys want to see, if there's any recipes that you want me to make, please leave a comment down below, um, and like the video, tell your friends, however you want to get in touch with me, um, which is great. We're going to be having an Instagram page coming out pretty soon. A lot of exciting stuff. This is just the beginning for the Grinders Cookbook, so buckle up. Let's make some stuff. On today's episode, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making cookie dough energy bites. This is a great recipe that I've personally used many times. I make them every week. Uh, it's something that I grab in the mornings on my way before I go to the gym so I can have just something in my stomach that I'm not working out on an empty stomach. It's super easy to make. It's seven main ingredients. They are all laid out right behind me. If you take a look at them, we have honey, unsweetened coconut flakes, rolled oats, chia seeds, vanilla extract, and peanut butter. This is a super easy snack to make. We're gonna be throwing a lot of the stuff in the blender, rolling it up, putting it in the freezer, and that's really it. When I'm heading down to the card room, it's a snack that I can grab, go, maybe have with a protein shake, and it makes me feel good. So, without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so step one of this recipe is gonna be very easy to do. I brought out the unsweetened coconut flakes, and I also have rolled oats here. Um, I'm using extra thick rolled oats. I found that if I coarse these or blend these for a little bit less time, they're a little bit thicker and they're able to hold everything better. Um, it really doesn't matter. I've made it both ways. Both ways work fine. Over on the other side, I have some unsweetened coconut flakes. I got these down at Market Basket. Uh, they're just in the baking aisle. Very easy to grab. So what we want to do first is we want to measure out two cups of each of these and put them in a blender. For this recipe, I am using a Ninja Blender. Uh, I'm gonna put a link down below at the end if you guys wanna, if you don't have a blender and you're looking to grab one. I've had this for like five years, it's great. Uh, we use it every day for protein shakes, for recipes when we're making them, very durable, and I've never had to sharpen the blades or do anything like that. So, let's start, and we're gonna grab a measuring cup. I have a half cup here, so it's gonna look like I'm doing four, but really we have four cups, um, Four scoops, two cups that we're gonna be throwing into the blender. thicker to scoop out of here, but kind of get a shot there. Full cup for you, full half cup. One, two, and four. Some of those were a little bit light, so let's grab a little bit just for good measure, and I like coconut, so a little extra coconut can't hurt. All right, so, uh, here what we do is I brought the uh, blender right over here. We have both of our ingredients that we already threw in here on top. Uh, I'm going to grab the cover for our blender and we're going to throw it on and all we're really doing is pulsing these. You, do, you don't want to send them in here for too long. Uh, what's going to happen is they're going to get very fine and when it gets to the point where we're actually rolling them into balls, it's going to be a little bit difficult. It's going to be messy. And there's going to be stuff everywhere. So I don't know. I would probably do five to ten seconds six times until they look a little bit coarser and not so super fine. So, Dinja, all you gotta do is power it on. There's a pulse button right here, super easy. Just And that's really it. Um, I can take, if I take this off and I put it into the camera a little bit, you'll be able to see, it's just, it's very fine, uh, not super fine. You can kind of still see some of the oats over here if I give it a little bit of a shake. Um, you should still be able to see some coarseness in there, but it definitely shouldn't resemble anything uh, like a powder, for sure. So with that, we're gonna pop this back on and we're gonna move on to the next step. All right. 
For our next step, what we're gonna be doing is basically taking the rest of the ingredients and throwing them right in here. We're gonna be blending it up one time and we should be left with a mixture that we can, that resembles almost like a, uh, like a dough. Um, we're gonna be able to roll up and we're gonna be done from that point for the most part. So basically a two-step recipe. Okay, so first thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with peanut butter. One thing I will mention to you guys during my vlogs, I've been cooking for about five, six years in a restaurant before now I kind of do it as a hobby. I realized I really liked it. I just don't like doing it for other people. Um, so yeah, anyways, when I measure most of the stuff, I'm gonna try to use measuring cups so you can see. I do eyeball a lot, um, but do it however you want. I'll give you the recipes uh, or I'll give you the measurements that you can use. Super easy, all right. Starting with our peanut butter, doesn't really matter. I have store brand peanut butter here. We go through a lot of peanut butter in this house. Um, so, I'm just get them by the tub, really. All right, so we need a half cup of peanut butter, putting it right into our mixture. Got my blender right down here. Just gonna grab a big old scoop. Something that looks roughly like a half of a cup. That's close. Uh, the thing about this recipe is, is you really you need to uh, look at the texture when it's done before you start rolling them. So one of the last things we're going to look at, if the texture doesn't seem right for you, you should be adding the honey or the peanut butter to get it a little bit thicker so that you can make the balls easier. Um, and I love peanut butter, so we're going to throw a little bit extra in there. Peanut butter's not bad for you, right? It's actually pretty good. Alright, let's throw that in there. It's good. Half cup peanut butter. Next we need a half cup of honey. Same deal, store brand honey, nothing crazy. Open that up. And honey's very, when you put honey in a measuring cup, it's very hard to get out afterwards and it takes forever. So I've made these enough times where I can kind of uh, just go with the flow. So I'm gonna eyeball this um, and see what we get here. Uh, it, you just throw it in right on top of the honey on the side of the blender, it doesn't matter. Cleaning the blender afterwards, really not that much of an issue with it. Honey is sticky, but I've never had a problem with doing this before. So, it's probably a quarter of a cup. You're probably gonna use, if you get a honey bear, you're probably gonna end up using about a quarter of it uh, in the end. Um, but this, the honey really makes it sweeter. Uh, and it's, it's honey, it's good for you. All right. That's probably close to about a half cup. And close that off. Held it for a long period of time, but it's honey, it comes out slow. Yeah. All right, and let's take a look. What's my next piece here? Uh, we're gonna be going with a quarter cup of chia seeds. Up to you, personally, I like the chia seeds. Um, I'll show you. I think they're in the baking aisle at Market Basket, um, but they're good for you. They say superfood of the Aztecs, so if the Aztecs are eating them, I'm a sucker for marketing. Let's just throw it in there. So for the chia seeds, we need a quarter of a cup. I'm gonna keep my same half cup measuring cup here and just go half. Pour that right in there. All right. Here's where uh, one of the rest, when I first learned how to make this recipe, some people like to put salt in. You can go with a half a teaspoon of salt if you really want to. I think they taste fine without it. I really don't see a need for you to be putting extra salt in here, especially if it's something you want, you're trying to eat a little bit cleaner. Um, I, I personally don't, but if you want, you can go ahead and throw in a half a teaspoon of salt too. Um, after that, we're looking at vanilla extract and the chocolate chips. This is what really sweetens it up and it tastes great. And when you look at the serving sizes of these things when they come out, negligible amount of calories here. So what we wanna do is we wanna start with a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. I got a little bottle of McCormick right here. I'm gonna eyeball this too. Uh, a teaspoon is basically one of your smaller spoons. If I grab my kitchen uh, stuff here, small spoon. If I compare that to a little bit of a tablespoon is gonna be something like this of a bigger spoon. So if you wanna measure out a half a teaspoon, probably a smaller, uh, one of your smaller soup spoons in your kitchen, but I'm not gonna measure that. So let's just do a little bit of vanilla extract. And then the last piece is going to be our half cup of chocolate chips. Any chocolate chips are fine. Uh, I go with dark chocolate, a little bit better for you. Uh, that's what I read online, so we're going with it. So, half cup of chocolate chips. 
right in here. I like chocolate, so let's go a little bit heavier on the chocolate, why not? Throw that pup right in there. And that's everything that you need to start to make the mixture. You can go ahead and pop that right back in the, in the blender and we're gonna be blending that up. But before we do that, let's take, a hand, let's take a look at a hand that I had this week. We have pocket kings, we're on the button, and let's see how it unfolds. So in this particular hand, we are looking at, I'm on the button, and I have king of hearts and the king of diamonds. Middle position one limps. The cutoff makes it $6 to go. Um, very, way too small for kings at this particular spot. Um, I also, I do, I wanna give a little bit of a profile about cutoff, because I have played many hours with him before. Cutoff is a very gambly man. Um, I have seen him call off with a 8-2 offsuit with a pair of eights um, with two, it, basically two over cars. He called an all in with, with bottom pair, spiked a deuce on the river and basically rubbed it in this guy's face. I think the, the session before, needless to say, he will get the money in with any sort of shred of equity. Uh, I don't want to call him a maniac because he's not exactly doing that type of calling um, or raising, but he's definitely a very loose lag. Um, so when he makes it $6, I can't exactly put him on a tighter range. Um, uh, I'd probably be looking at something, um, a little bit looser than a button range. Um, anyway, so he makes it $6 to go. I want to charge a little bit more for this. I figure I'm way ahead of him at this point. Um, so I look around the table. I want to make a three bet in my head. I'm, I want to go with uh, two and a half times the raise plus one big blind per limper. Uh, that's typically the uh, way I've been following three bets recently. My sizing may be a little bit off here. Uh, I made it $18 to go. Small, both blinds fold. Middle position, one thinks about it for a little bit, makes the call. Cutoff also makes the call. So we're going three ways to a flop. The flop comes the 10 of diamonds, the nine of diamonds, and the six of hearts. All red cards. Um, so now we have Straight draws out there. Uh, if seven, eight had called in this spot, obviously they have the nuts at this point. Um, there's flush draws out there. So when middle position one checks and cutoff checks to me, I decide I wanna go for a two thirds pot bet here. There's about, so there should be 20 or 18, 18, 18, uh, 18 plus the blinds make it about a $60 pot, a little bit more at that point. So I lead for $40 on the button. Middle position one thinks about it for, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. He makes the call and immediately the cutoff, the Asian player that I was talking about before, jams it for 103. I'm certainly not folding kings to this particular player. Had it been somebody else, maybe I can find a fold here. Um, but as it is, there's, no, there's just no way I'm folding to him. So I go ahead and I make the call. Middle position also makes the call. And that really is when alarm bells start going off in my head for middle position. If he had, you know, if he had had the seven, eight or something, or he has ace king of diamonds um, chasing the flush draw, it just seems like a set, he has a set here in this more often than not. So I figure I'm behind at this point, but it is what it is. So turn card, now at this point, it's me in middle position, one heads up. At this point, the turn, uh, turn card comes out and it is the, it's gonna be a black jack, the jack of clubs, I believe. Um, so a little bit more of a little bit of a scarier card because now open-ended straight draws got there too. Um, middle position one certainly could have had queen king here. Uh, he also could have had seven eight. Um, so when it gets to him, his first to act, and he looks at my remaining stack. In this, I should have said, in this particular hand, the effective stack is the cutoff. I think he had about 120 at that point. Uh, a little bit more than that because that makes the sense for the all-in at 103. Um, so when he goes ahead and he looks at my stack and he's like, whatever is left, at this point I have $40. I'm not, my pot odds at this point are too good with a river card still to come. Figure I'm behind, but I, I, my SPR is just way too low to fold here. So I reluctantly make the call uh, and the river brings in the jack of clubs, whatever the other black jack I didn't mention before was. I think it's the jack of clubs, the jack of spades. Um, so now we have, so flush draws did not get there, straight draws got there, sets now turned into boats, and we're not feeling great about this hand at all. Um, 
with no more money, no more betting left to happen, uh, I table my kings. Middle position one shows seven, eight of hearts for the flopped straight and open-ended straight flush draw. Um, and the cutoff shows pocket sixes for a rivered boat. So we're not winning this one. Uh, we get stacked for the maximum. Looking back on this hand, I think that I would say some people, some feedback for people that I've kicked this hand off to recently have said that the three bet sizing is too small. Um, but when talking to cutoff afterwards, I admit, and I mean, he could just be blowing smoke, but at the same time, I kind of believe him here. Um, I'd asked him what bet he would have folded those sixes to. And he said anything really less than 50, uh, he's still calling there. I, I just don't see where I'm three betting to $50 uh, in this particular spot. That seems way too big and I'm just gonna force folds with a pre with the second best hand in poker. So I, I just don't think I'm gonna do that personally. So I don't think I, there was any way for this to be avoided. Talking to middle position one who obviously got rivered out afterwards as well. He said $35 would probably have been his threshold to let it go. Uh, I could see a three bet to 35 there in retrospect, but I don't know. Um, any feedback, comments, anything, post them down below. So yeah, that's our hand for the week. And um, hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, so getting down here a little bit here, guys. So I um, want to show you how we're going to be rolling these balls up. Um, I'm going to try to back myself out of here and really focus on what the texture and what the ball size should be looking like. Um, blenders over here. Let's get a little bit, uh, let's get started. So what we want to do with the Ninja blender, which is what I really like about this, is you can see I can just wiggle. It comes in a couple pieces. And this is the blade. I mean, there's really nothing on it. This is super easy to clean. Um, it's a great feature. I'm going to do them and throw that in the sink. Get to the dishes later. All right, so we have our giant um, blender full of ingredients here, all blended up. So what we want to do is we want to make them into smaller, uh, bite-sized, just balls, really. So I found it's easiest if you use a spoon to portion them out. So you can just take kind of like if you can see that, take like a scoop like that. Um, but it's really up to you on how you want to do this. So just take it off. It's going to feel really weird the first time you do it because it feels like everything is going to be falling apart. And you're probably going to make a huge mess the first time you try it. But what you're doing is if you just keep squeezing it a couple good times here, I'm going to try to get that out. Um, what I'm going to do is make it, give it a couple good squeezes. And that's what you should have in the end. Um, I'm going to see if I can get that right into focus for you there. Let's go out a little bit. Perfect. The, they're going to be a little bit softer, um, but we're going to throw these in the freezer and they're going to harden up right away. So you're going to have a lot in this recipe. You're probably going to end up, depending on the size of them, I would say you should aim for about 15. Um, but yeah, it's going to, it all depends on how, how big you're making them. Uh, Honestly, you can make them really big. It's kind of a little bit heavier. You make them too small. They're harder to uh, um, stay together. So you'll figure it out once you start rolling them. I'm going to go through this whole batch and roll a bunch of them. Here's another little small one I just made. Throw that in there. Grab another scoop. Uh, I tried. You can try doing it with an ice cream scoop. I've tried that as well, too. Uh, I found that most ice cream scoops are a lot bigger than the size you really want. Eating one of these things that's the size of an ice cream scoop is absolutely massive, but if you can find a small one, maybe the ones they have in the restaurant to do like coleslaw or something, those could work too. Personally, I just use a spoon. I haven't seen really much of a difference. You'll be able to also, you'll be able to tell pretty early on whether or not you need more honey or peanut butter because they should be coming out with this type of a consistency and they just kind of like stick together, no problem. So I've rolled three so far. To give you a look at what the three of them look like. Pan out a little bit, there you go. All right, when we come back, I'll have all of them rolled. Okay guys, welcome back. So I just finished rolling up all of mine. I have about 15. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post a picture in it probably in a second, and when we're back, we'll take a look at what they look like. 
I have about 15 that came out. I'm gonna bring it up in the picture here so you can take a look at what they should look like. Um, there you go, that's a good shot right there. All right, so you, these are not yet going into the freezer, but they will in a second. Uh, if I look down there, I have this whole bowl. So, rest of the rest of the recipe is super easy. What you wanna do is you wanna throw them right in the freezer for about 15 minutes or so. Set a timer on your stove, on your phone, whatever. Just put them in there for 15 minutes. It doesn't have to be exactly 15 minutes. Just, I don't know, somewhere around there. It's fine. When they're done, take them out, throw them into the fridge. Technically, you could eat them right now if you really wanted to, but putting them in the freezer is gonna really solidify them to make them into that uh, almost like a granola bar type of texture. Uh, and then they just sit in the fridge. You don't have to cover them. You don't have to do anything. They can sit in there for up to two weeks. I think the last batch I just made was going on three or four weeks and they were fine. They got a little bit harder towards the end for sure, but you're guaranteed good for at least two weeks on these things. They're not gonna go bad. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw them in the freezer right now. I'll take them out. I'll post a picture of what they look like. And um, yeah, there we go, much better, okay. So what I wanted to do is while that stuff is in there um, hardening up, kind of give you an idea of what to expect on this channel. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing a lot of hand histories, uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of recipes, and we're gonna kind of flip back and forth. I'm always open to user submissions. If you guys want to go over a hand that you had at the casino, feel free to post a link down below, get in touch with me. I'm, I'm gonna have an Instagram account up pretty soon, Grinders Cookbook, uh, the name of this channel as well. Um, if you have any ideas for recipes that you want to see, anything like that, feel free to reach out and leave a comment down below. It's great. Very much appreciate it. Um, uh, I think that's it for now. So, um, yeah. If you can hear that ding song, ding, ding song, ding, sound, sound. That's what I'm looking for. If you hear that ding, that is the timer going off for our recipe today. So let's go ahead and we'll cancel that out and let's take a look and see what these guys look like. All right, going down into our freezer here. Shut the door. Cool. If we look here, here is the final product. Looks absolutely great. These things are gonna be going straight into the fridge at this point. Get a little bit of an aerial shot here. Oh my, there we go. Get a little bit of an aerial shot here. Perfect snack on the go. They're about the size, I mean, I made mine. Let me do that. About that size. I'm gonna bring it out a little bit, there we go. Not rolled perfectly, but they're pretty good. And that's what they look like. Cookie dough energy bites. Great snack. Enjoy it, my treat to you. And with that, episode one is a wrap. Thanks for joining us this week. We went over Pocket Kings where I get stacked for the absolute maximum, which felt great leaving the casino. Um, that's all I actually bought in right afterwards, but nothing really of note that at night. Um, please like, subscribe, tell your friends. We're gonna be getting an Instagram page up pretty soon for everybody to follow. Uh, the Grinders Cookbook is off and running at this point. It's gonna be a great journey. Um, if you have any suggestions for hands you wanna see, for recipes you want me to make, uh, you want me to cook, um, all that stuff, I can definitely do that. Uh, we're gonna be looking at a weekly schedule, probably uh, towards the beginning of the week. I'm gonna try to stick to Sundays. Depends on how editing goes. Um, until next week on the Grinders Cookbook. Peace.